Hey, what's up? In this video, we're gonna take a look at possibly the coolest feature there is about Zod. Now, if you have no idea what Zod is, it's a TypeScript library that goes beyond what TypeScript can even do. It's really cool. And let's get into the coolest feature, some examples, some important things to know when you're working with Zod and specifically using this feature to make your entire development process way easier. And then we'll also take a look at a specific example where I used this feature in a production setting for my most recent open source project. So first off, let's dive into some examples. Okay, hey, so here we are. This is inside of a Node.js project. And the reason it's JS is because TypeScript, yes, it does matter. I mean, we're using a TypeScript library after all, um, but it's just kind of a pain to set up in Nodes. So we're in an index.js here. Okay, so take a look at what we've got here. It's a user that we've named John with an age of 30 and an email. And you don't need to worry about the right side right here. That is kind of what we're gonna be working towards in this video and some examples that I'm gonna use to explain all this. Um, okay, so what Zod allows us to do and the feature that I meant in the intro is a feature of Zod that is called parsing. And what parsing can do for us is super powerful. So what we can do with Zod is define a schema and then according to that schema, we can validate any object that we want. Let's go ahead and define one of those schemas um, so I can show you exactly what I mean. And there is a convention to name these schemas. I normally call them user schema and I saw a lot of other people also implementing this exact same convention um, just so you know exactly what they are. And when we import Z from Zod, that is what we need to do for all this to work. Um, we get so much stuff, right? A, a, a lot of stuff that we can use, um, but I want to highlight some parse stuff. So with that schema, that's going to allow us to parse and we define the object that we want to parse. So in here goes the ideal structure for the object that we want to ensure it has after we parse it. So whatever the object looks like, in this case, the user object right here, after parsing, it should look like what we define right now. So let's say we want a name that is gonna be az.string. Now we could also do something like az.literal and then here literally pass John, right? If the name should only be John. In our case, we're fine with any string. That is the condition. Now we could also do number, but then the parsing would fail because we are passing it a string, but more on that later. So the name, we want to ensure it is always a string. The age should always be a number. And then the email that we want should always be a string. And Zod also does something really cool. We can also do dot email. So there is an email template already in here that validates this email for us. So what this schema does is it always ensures after doing this following operation, user schema dot parse, and that is not a const, we should say const validated user is equal to user schema. And now we've got a bunch of options we can do and we want to take a look at the parse. Now there's also a safe parse. I'm gonna to get to that in a second. For now, we're gonna use the parse and what we want to pass um, this user object right here so we can pass it in here. Okay, so let's log that out. Console log validated user and see what happens. I'm gonna move this over to the side for a second. We won't need that. Let me clear the screen and then execute this file right here. And of course we get an error and that might be because we need to pass commas. Now this is really a pain because JavaScript doesn't highlight that stuff for us while TypeScript does. Um, but I think that might be the reason of the error. So let's try restarting that. And okay, that was the error. So we parsed this object. So we made sure it has this exact structure and we can see the name is John, the age is 30 and the email is exactly what we have in the object. Now, if we want to implement something that is not in the object, we want to ensure the object always has this shape. And for example, the user also has a, I don't know, salary, which is a Z dot number as well then you'll see what happens because this will throw an error if um, the object does not match the schema that we parse it with. In this instance, you can see salary z dot number fails. So whenever using the parse, that is what you should take away from this right now is you want to wrap that in a try catch because it throws, right? We want to uh, catch that error. And then we can also say if, um, if the error is an instance of, and then from Zot, we get something really interesting called z dot zot error. And then we can handle the error accordingly. So we can say error and you can see now it also has type annotations. So we can say error dot message, for example, and then log that error dot message. So if, if this parse fails, we log the error message. Let's try that again. 
Let's clear the screen and run this. And I just noticed we also need to fix two things. Man, it's such a pain that JavaScript doesn't highlight this. So we also need to implement the comma there ourselves. And obviously, TypeScript would, would highlight that too. We also want to put the validated user right there. Okay, so debugging done. And now we can see that it gets caught by the catch, right? So we get the, the code, the expected, the received. Now I'm not sure, yeah, apparently the message didn't work. I need to refine this. I didn't prepare for this, but that's how we did it in production. It might be Zod uh, issue as well. I'm not sure, but you can definitely catch the Zod error and then just log the message. And um, that works just fine. However, what you should take away is um, that the parsing throws an error. If you don't want that, that is very much possible. So we can also have the parse just like this and then do a save parse. And what you can see with the save parse, if we take a look at the validated user dot, you can see there's data, error and success. So let's say this goes through, right? We remove the salary, then this should go through. And then let's log the validated user so you can see what it looks like. Let's run the script and we can see success is true and data and the parsed object. Great, so now we know how parsing works, but now you might ask, Josh, what is the coolest feature you were talking about? And while it is the parse already, take a look at this. If we implement something like, oops, no, salary in here, let's say 1,500, 1, um, just save that. Now you're gonna see the really cool stuff. So let's try this again. Let's do a normal parse because this will not throw an error. Remember the difference now is before we had the salary in the object that we want to ensure the structure of, and now we have it on the object that we are parsing. So there's a small but very important difference. If we run this again, you can see there is no error. And interestingly enough, what we get back for the validated user is this object right here. So only the stuff that is in the schema is present in the parsed object and everything else is removed. And that is super cool. If anyone finds a security vulnerability in your application and you're about to put something into your database, this is the best method, at least that I know of, to ensure a certain kind of object structure with this parsing right here. If somebody pollutes your object by doing I don't know what and they get stuff in there that you do not want, then it's not going to get put into your database if you do it with Zod. So this is super cool. It gives you so many options. You can have dot optional. You can read up on all of that in the Zod, in the Zod documentation that I'm going to link in the description. But that is, I think, the coolest feature that I want to show you. And also one very important thing that you want to know about when you're working with this is check this out. I've prepared the little age array right here. So in the Zod documentation, it says, whenever we parse an object, it is not referenced to by reference, but instead by value, it is a deep copy. So what that means is we get the H array, and then we also want to define the H array in our parsing schema right here. Now, I'm just going to uh, copy this try catch block over here. There's no point writing that ourselves right now. And then I can already close this file. Uh, we don't need that anymore. So I've added the H array to the user. I've already added the H array. I've also added the H array to the user schema. So it's going to parse just fine. And then let's take a look at the validated user and the normal user, but we're not going to push anything yet. I just want you to take a look at this, see what happens, yarn dev, because right now we're getting the exact same object twice. Let me drag this out a bit and scroll up so we can see in, in both objects the properties that we get are exactly the same which makes sense considering we're parsing exactly the shape of the object however you remember what i said about the deep copy right it is referenced to by value and not by reference like arrays no, uh, normally are in javascript or objects in that matter as well remember all the simple types like strings and stuff are referenced by value but arrays are referenced by reference I guess that, yeah, I mean, it's true. It sounds weird. So after saving that and then running yarn dev, see what happens. It's very interesting. So when I scroll up the validated user, so whatever we parsed also, and I'm going to make this a bit larger for you, has a four at the end. So we were able to mutate this array by pushing into it directly, which is a mutating function. But the original reference array was not affected at all. So the original object did not get modified even though normally in JavaScript, these operations um, change the reference of the array and not the actual value. So that is just one very important thing to know when you're working with this. I think it's really convenient. It makes working with Zod even easier. 
And that is the coolest feature about, the, about Zod, or possibly at least the coolest feature that I wanted to show you, this object parsing. Hey, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you did, then chances are you probably also want to know how to write clean, reusable React components. And for that, this video is going to be really helpful to you. Have a good one and bye bye.